Hello friends and welcome to our fast API tutorial. Uh, in this video, which is number seven already, uh, we're going to talk about the request body and passing in multiple parameters. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. So this is um, a, a fairly large um, set of routes here. Um, I'm going to just hide, or not, not hide, I'm just going to comment out all of them because it's getting messy. We're gonna have, um, um, you know, multiple routes that are all calling the same thing. I probably should have done this a little bit earlier, but I'm gonna do this now. We will declare this as part seven, body, multiple parameters. And I'll make a nice little arrow right here. There. So this will allow us to kind of, you know, keep things a little bit leaner. This is now going to not, there we go, no operations to find in the spec. So we're not going to have to worry about, you know, clashes or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and, and kind of work from this uh, for now. Again, first video series. I apologize for, um, you know, just not being very good at this yet. I mean, I'm no, I'm no Brad Traversy or, uh, I don't know, Kevin Powell, he's another really good YouTuber. There are a ton. I don't know why I just picked those two, whatever. Okay, let's move on. So what we're gonna do first, and we wanna make sure that we're not actually hiding our our app itself. We'll leave in the query and path because I'm sure we're gonna use it at some point in time. So let's go ahead and declare a class. We're gonna say class is item, and we're gonna declare base model. Now we're gonna say the name is a string. We're gonna say the description, is a string, but it's going to be optional. We're going to say price is a float and tax is a float, but this will also be optional. Um, this, uh, in case you don't recall, this is, um, oh, I don't like that. No, let's, um, let's do this then. I definitely don't like that spacing it was put in there. Um, so we did we used this sort of uh, this model before. So now let's declare a put method. App.put items item ID. And we're gonna say async def update item. We will declare our I don't know, I don't even know what that's called, wildcard parameter? I'm not sure. But this is our that's our arg parameter so that all of these afterwards are keyword arguments. So we're gonna say item ID is an integer. It is a path parameter. We're gonna say title equals the ID of the item to get. It'll be greater than equal, equal to zero, less than or equal to uh, 150. I don't know. I don't know why I picked 150. The query is gonna be a string or none we're gonna set it equal to none. And item is gonna be an item or none, equal to none. We've seen this before. If you declare a, um, let's pass so that it at least ref reformats and looks okay. If you declare this base model and pass this into your path operation function, it will recognize it as a request body parameter um, and not something else. So we can say results equals item ID is item ID. If Q results dot update Q Q. If item results dot update item item very simple. Return results done. So now what we've done here is we have set a um, a route where we can pass in, as we've seen before, a path parameter. Here it's showing a max and a min. I don't know why it didn't work in the last video. None of this is making any sense to me, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, let's see if this works. Yeah, I don't know why it wasn't working in the last video. Whatever, at least it works now. Um, so we are sending in um, an item ID 
between 0 and 150, we're sending in a query, and we're sending in a request body, and we get this as our expected response body. Now, we've seen this all before. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're really talking about in this video, and that's sending multiple parameters. So let's declare another class. User, we're going to inherit from base model. We're going to say username string, full name string, or none equals none. It reformats. And now we can pass in um, multiple uh, request body parameters. Uh, let's, we'll leave this in there, it's fine. It does, it's not gonna kill anyone. Uh, we're gonna say user is now user. And now we update again. If user results dot update user user. Now we refresh our page. And here you can see it automatically updates this for us. So we all we need to do is pass in a dictionary object, a JSON object, if you will. Um, before, let's get rid of this really quickly and hide this. Now let's refresh the page again. And we'll go into here. And here you can see we're just, it's, we only have one body parameter. So it's just taking this in as the item. Okay, and it will return that item. So if we try this out again, just to reiterate what's going on, we can see it's setting item equals to that. As we add in a second body parameter, well, this updates and it allows us now, instead of it being the default JSON object, we have one that's item, and we have one that's user. So we now try this out, and we don't have to pass in both of them. We can get rid of the item, and we can pass in user is, I don't even know if that's how it was styled. I've been watching a lot of Mr. Robot recently. Uh, we go ahead and we pass this in. Oh, that's right. Try again. Success. So you can see, we don't have to pass in the, um, the item itself. We can pass in the user or the item, but when we have multiple body parameters, we then have to declare them in our request body. We can't just assume that there's only one request body anymore. Now though, let's add in one more item here that we wanna be another request item. I mean, a request body item. We're gonna call it importance int. So from what, from what we remember, if we just do this, this importance value, and we will add this in here, if importance results dot update importance There we go. Now, if we refresh this page, this is going to assume it's a query parameter, though. We want it to be a request body. Now, we could come in here and we could declare base model. Um, int, and then we declare it down here instead. Importance, and we refresh the page and we will see importance is in here, but th that just seems, it seems like a little too much to, uh, to just pass in one parameter. So what we can do instead, just like FastAPI has a query and a path object, we can actually use the body object. If we go ahead and import that here, now we refresh the page, we refresh, here we go, and here. Now it allows us to just pass it in, still in the request body, but just as a single, a single value. So we don't need to have a nested dictionary which can get uh, just messy and it's hard to you know, figure out how you wanna name these sort of things. Oh yeah, 55. And you can see, we get, uh, oh, where did it go? 
Oh, interesting. Because it was zero, it treated it as false. Let's say five. There we go. That was a duh moment right there. Okay. So um, what we can then uh, also do is we can kind of go in the opposite direction. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of user and importance. And let's say that we want, so if we remember, we go ahead and we refresh this page and we will see that this is just the default um, parameter here. It's the default request body. But let's say for some reason we want, you know, we want every request body to have a key and then a, a value, which is a dictionary associated with it. Well, what we can do is we can actually set this equals body and we can say embed equals true. Now what this will do is this will say that you need to then pass in a your your request body as a key value pair with the key being item and the value being the dictionary you want to actually pass in. So it removes the it, it no longer treats this as a as a default sort of setup. You need to explicitly declare it. If we refresh the page, we can see here it's telling us right there if we do 55 and let's get rid of this and see if it breaks, how it breaks. Yes, field is required. So item is required. Um, let's do item. Um, no, I don't want to try and do that. It would just get messy and things would probably break and we're already at 11, 12 minutes by now. Uh, so yeah, so I think we'll just leave it at that. Um, as a just a, a final refresher, if you want to have a singular request body, but you want it to be as a key value pair, you use this, uh, this embed keyword. Okay, I think that's it um, for this video. Uh, in the next video, we are going to be talking about um, uh, body fields, uh, field being a, a pydantic um, uh, it's a pydantic object, not necessarily a fast API specific one. Um, and then we will talk also about, I think, uh, nested models, uh, possibly. We'll see how long it takes me to do fields because I am apparently a fairly loquacious individual. Okay, see you next time.